Hello and welcome to the stream. Um, I did put up a little pop-up here that says the stream starts and I just made that time up from basically current time plus, you know, less than a minute. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so the only people who would be able to join us would be people who are like insanely dedicated to me and, um, you know, or people I've told about the stream beforehand. Uh, so I don't, don't want to say anything important uh, before, I you know, before the stream officially starts at this time. And when the stream starts, I won't say anything important either, but that will be for a different reason because I have nothing important to say. So those are, you know, they're, they're, they're different reasons, same, same effect. Uh, quantity zero, but for different reasons. It's a very mathematical concept uh, to have two things be equal uh, for a strange reason. Okay, now it's stream start time, so we'll go ahead and start the stream. Let's go ahead and look at our readme stream. I don't know what's in it because I don't really look. Um, okay. Ooh, and I forgot to update the date. Today is the 14th. Not that it really matters. Okay. Now, um, I probably should have put this a little bit later on in the uh, to-do list. Uh, you might notice that I have a, a bias towards writing more code instead of writing up what I've already done. Um, and that is actually terrible for an academic, but I'm not an academic anymore, so I'm, I'm happy. Um, so what I was thinking about doing is we at one point you were using the uh, SPICE um, subroutines to calculate eclipses. We decided it wasn't for us because it only told us when the center of an object was eclipsed. And, you know, we're obviously interested in eclipses on the surface where people would, you know, where there would be observers, not necessarily people. However, um, my solution only works for spherical, uh, uh, spherical moons. Uh, like the four uh, Galilean moons of Jupiter. It does not work for things like Metis, which are very oddly shaped. Um, so we might, you know, so the and Metis is actually fairly small. Um, it's much, much smaller than the Galilean moons. So the center approach might actually work not 100% accurately, but somewhat accurately for Metis and more accurately than my assume everything is a sphere method. Plus, even if we don't use it for just Metis, uh, we can use it as a good check on our other program to see that the numbers we're getting are reasonable. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to try to, uh, I think I already have a program that does this. We're going to try to revive the correct or the you know, SPICE approved way of computing eclipses, use it on Metis, write up the answer to that question. i got to be careful because I've written up part of an answer to another question and I don't want to contradict myself. So I will have to put in some stuff like, you know, yes, usually you can't use this method, but you can use it for very small satellites like Metis and get some degree of accuracy. Um, we're also going to check in Stellarium to show that you can use Stellarium to do this. And what I'd forgotten is um, you can, of course, use Horizons, uh, and the magnitude change might tell you uh, when, there is a, when the eclipse has uh, started, the total eclipse has started. Um, now, of course, you might say, well, you can't really request that much data from Horizons because you know, you can't really request every minute's worth of data. And the answer is you, you really can if you use their email interface. And I've requested tons of data from them. I don't know if I feel up to, uh, to um, you know, getting tons more data from them, but th I've written a program that will, you know, send email that does that. Uh, and then we will also be asking Stellarium for a text API, so or looking for it in their code, and then asking them for it. Plus, we're going to, uh, you know, we're going to report the errors about moon not dimming properly, and I think the uh, zoom in causes planets to disappear, um, as we saw yesterday. Um, Jupiter eclipsing sun to disappear. Okay, and I, I think I've mentioned somewhere down below, but we're also going to say moons don't darken during eclipse. Now, the problem is I have an older version of Stellarium, so they might ding me and say we already fixed that, but whatever. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, find, or try to find at least, the older program I had that used uh, C Spice's method, not the, uh, where's my X term? Not the method that, um, there it is. Uh, not the method that we're using now, which you know accounts for surfaces, but, uh, um, wow. That accounts for surfaces, but doesn't use uh, C Spice's method. It, it, I don't think it even uses it partly. So I think it's OCLT something. And we'll just do this real quick. Um, and it looks like it's like hard only in one, f you know, except for the playground. BC obscurations about C. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to make sure that we don't, we're not in BC obscurations. Good, we're not. 
And that's really a dumb name because it sounds too much like BC Occultations. So what we're going to do is we're going to rename it um, to BC Spice Occultations. So this is not really Occultations, but we'll, we'll mention that. And this is going to be the file that uses the Spice subroutines to compute um, uh, to compute uh, occultations. Now we're going to add a little bit more to this program that we and that we need to add that also back to our original program because we don't really need to be searching for total eclipses all the time. We can search for partial eclipses and then inside of a partial eclipse we can look to see if a portion of that partial eclipse is a total eclipse. And that's much more efficient than looking for all the total eclipses unless, you know, if we're interested in both partial and total and we are. So we're going to do this git move which both moves the file and then next time I push git it's going to uh, it's going to tell me that I've done this. That's going to tell the uh, the git system that I've done this. And so now we're just going to uh, go here and um, spice occultations. Okay. Now we're going to um, we're going to copy code here, which is fine. Well, I mean, you know, not code shouldn't be repeated, but we're going to sort of use the same um, original startup as you can see. And just to avoid confusion, we're going to use the, the usage is going to be the same. We're going to abandon our old usage. Uh, variables, we so this is very, very similar. And um, um, OK. Mm. So it appears that OCT, uh, this occultation function, requires frames, whereas mine does not, because we're not. Uh, oh, and I, I just realized why it requires frames. Because it has to handle elliptical bodies, uh, which are not spherical, it needs to know how the bodies are orient, oriented, not orientated, oriented. So this is this is a pl place we have to kind of um, we kind of have to change things a little bit. And we're going to um, I'm going to regret this. We're going to refer to these as consistently as moon sun. So the um, obscured frame, the moon is the thing that's being obscured. Oh geez, okay. So this will be the moon frame. The planet is doing the obscuring. And we will need, um, I, I think we have too many, I know I'm going to regret this. We have too many variables here, I think. Um, obscured code, wow. And part of this might be because we try to combine the two things um, both the uh, the spice method and the uh, s the surface method. So um, I am going to. I'm pretty sure we're going to need at least moon ID, sun ID, and planet ID. If we need more, we will add them as we need them. Um, man. Okay. And this boolean is a, as a check. I think I might have this boolean here. I just call it found. Um, right. So I, I just use one variable because if any of them is not found, we're, we're kind of screwed anyway. So we'll just do this like this. Um, our variable setup is here. Check for correct. Very, very similar code here. I w wonder if we can use a diff on it. Okay. And our code will be moon sun planet I don't know if that's in the same order I gave them in the command line but it doesn't matter oh it is obviously because we're, we're pulling out the command lines okay so far so printing out its parameters I don't really care if it does that or not um, we'll leave that in there for now then we need to so this does this little body thing before whoa kind of impressed how it gets all this data before we load the uh, standard.tm is that uh, these might just be built in so actually this is wrong we should actually be we should actually be furnishing our uh, as many uh, parameters as possible first and then get the NAFE IDs that we need so let's go ahead and okay determine frames for obscuring and um, oh okay sorry these are actually um, These are actually just checks to make sure these bodies exist. We'll go ahead and do those checks. They're not actually, actually we might not need to. We, um, yeah, we might just need to make sure that the frames exist. I mean, if the frames don't exist, it doesn't matter whether the bodies exist or not. 
because we can't do anything with them. Okay, so the thing being obscured is the moon. So that's moon ID. Okay, now we're going to get a little bit of a hassle here. Um, uh, let's see, confirm C. So this is, we're trying to find the frame of the obscured object, which is moon. Um, we're trying to find the moon frame, which we have defined. Okay, and this is the Boolean saying whether we can find it or not. We'll just stick that into um, the single variable found. Now, obscured code, I'm pretty sure, is the planet ID here. No, 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 no. Obscured code just come back to us. Um, is that the frame of the obscuring thing? Huh. Actually. Yeah, it looks like we do need moon. So I'm going to guess. We're going to obviously do a lot of checking here. So the obscured code is going to be the moon uh, frame, which I think we have. Um, um, yeah, we have the, and it's going to be. I was get this wrong. It's going to be a. I think we can just put in, yeah, okay, and this is actually wrong. The obscure ring frame is the planet frame, and this is moon frame, but I think I'm doing this wrong, because I think, because moon frame is already an array, it, I shouldn't need to ampersand that. So, already getting unhappy with this, but let's go ahead and do this. The obscuring frame is the the planet. Uh, the obscuring code, so the, the frame we want is the planet frame. Uh, maybe, oh, sorry, it's the planet we're putting in. Uh, something's wrong. This, okay, so let's go ahead and look at the instructions, <laughs> when in doubt, of what this does. CNM, let's, come on, escape W, and we will go to our lovely browser, ooh! Okay. No, 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 no. Get out of there. Um, let's see if I've gotten any responses on this. I don't think I have. No, I haven't. Okay, which is probably a good thing. Oh. I didn't see that comment. Whoa, plus 20. Wow. Um... Um, okay, well, and I got plus 20 points. That's got, that's always good. Let's see where I got them. Again, this is totally irrelevant and, um, um, and just a waste of your time. But, you know, I don't care. Okay, what I was going to do is look at the Sea Spice manual that I have bookmarked. Okay. I think I call it Sea Spice. I'm going to look at the C-Spice manual, which I don't have bookmark, which I will bookmark, and this is going to be in home user doc. Or it's not going to be in home user doc. Um, home user spice, I think that actually exists. Spice 64, there is, a, there is a documentation here somewhere. Here, and I'm going to bookmark this. HTML. So here, I could have sworn I actually did bookmark this before. But anyway, we're going to bookmark it now. And the thing we really want is this thing, the API reference guide. And now we want to find, see there it is, center name to associated frame. That rhymes. Okay, so how do we get this? Um, name of the object to find a frame for. And this might get ugly. I'm hoping the name can be, you know, the um, the ID. So we want the frame for the moon. That's fine. That's how long it's going to be. Or how, you know, we need to put it in a string of that length. Maximum length available for frame name. The ID code of the frame associated with. Okay, so this will actually give us back NAFE IDs, um, which in our case are useless because we kind of already know them. Um, 
we'll go ahead and um, make a note here. Note: Moon code and planet code will just be interversions of moon ID and planet ID. We hope. That's the plan. Okay, and then I, I guess we. Do, I don't know why we. I thought we needed the planet frame. That doesn't even make sense because it has nothing to do with the planet. And then the output will be the name of the frame with the ID. This. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Sorry. This is different. This is not the NAFE ID of the planet. This is the NAFE ID of the frame. So we actually do need up here not just the um, them as strings. We need them as uh, frame IDs. And I think. Oh, I do need to say ID here because we already have a. Uh, a moon frame and a, and a planet frame. This is moon frame ID and planet frame ID. So these are just numbers that correspond to the names of the frames. Uh, we're getting both. Okay. So what are we getting here? The ID code, which is, I think it's int, right? Yeah, it's an int. So we're getting the code and then the name. So let's do this right. Moon frame ID followed by the moon frame, which because it's an array, I can pass it like this, and then found. Uh, now, the one problem with using the same variable twice is that we do have to sort of say here, if not found, panic and do bad things. Um, Frame ID for moon not found. Uh, then we do this. Well, you know what? Actually, at this point, I want to test to make sure that uh, I'm not totally in the boonies here. Uh, let's see if this can even run and that part of it can be done. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and do an exit zero here just to make sure that we... Uh, I guess we should probably print out the frame ID or something. Because, um, I mean, obviously, if it's not found, we will. Um, moon frame... And then we'll give it both in the string name, which is moonframe, and in the integer name, which is uh, moonframe ID. And hopefully that will um, that will work. Okay, so now we're going to make pipe to less because I want to see if spice occultations works. Ooh, observer undeclared. Okay, so the one big problem we have here is we have a whole bunch of code that we're not using that is not commented out. So let's go ahead and comment that out now. Dun, 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 dun. Man. Yeah, and I'm almost 90% sure. I don't know why I say almost 90%. That doesn't even make sense. Um, I think this will match what I need it to match. All right. Um, observer undeclared. So I, just, I have some code that's not commented out properly. Um, let me re have Emacs re. I did an F2 here to sort of make it. Uh, so let's see where this observer is actually occurring. And it is in line. Uh, line 38. Which is. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Totally my bad. Um. The params are now moon, sun, planet, s year, year. I changed the names of everything to be what I was hoping would be clearer, but I, I actually think it's less clear now. Um, because we, we sort of, unless you know that the you're using the moon as your observer. Okay. Um, exit, okay, so that's when it's not happy with this. You expected something more, didn't you? Um, line 53, expected de declaration or statement at in end of input. Do, am I in like a loop or something? Um, this, I mean the end of the main, oh! I need to end off my main main uh, function. Uh, so one of these brackets down at the bottom does it, but we're just going to do it right here. Okay. So, 
Beast. Oh wow, it's unhappy with the warning. Unused variable. Yes, that's okay because we're not. We, we do need it. We're not going to use it yet. Um. Um. Cn fine. Yes, that's fine. We don't use it yet. Uh, but are you going to compile? Um. That should be used. Planet Frame ID should be used. Oh, no, no, not yet. We're only getting it for the moon right now. So it did compile, but it's really unhappy with us. And I will probably need to do a rehash to get that to work. Okay, so I just want to see. Okay, good. It'll say... Um, yeah, let's go ahead and clean up the instructions a little bit if you give the wrong sort of thing. And we'll clean them up by making them identical to the confusing instructions from the other um, from the other program. So this, this. Okay. And again, that's a trivial change and I really shouldn't have to do a make after it, but I'm going to because I am just that guy. Alright. So let's make the moon, our moon, 301, the sun is 10, 399, 2000, 2001. Frame ID for moon 301 not found. So, I'm going to bet you anything if I put in the word moon, though, it'll work. Doesn't matter. Case doesn't matter. Yep. So this is actually bad. So this is something we need to deal with that we didn't have to deal with before, which is the uh, frame generating function will not accept strings that look like integers. Um, so what do we do? I don't care. No, no. What do we do? We, um, let's see if there's an other function that does, um, sort of, um, associated frame stuff. Class and class ID to, that's probably not what we need, but we'll keep that one in mind. Center name to associated frame, class, those are the only two. Okay. Well, let's see what the hell this does. G return the frame name, frame ID, and center associated with a given frame and class ID. So uh, the class, let's, is the class, this identifies which subsystem is the ID code. Um, wow. I think I understand what this is saying, but let's look at some examples to be sure. I think the second argument is just the NAFE ID. Um, Oh, hang on. Hang on. There, this other thing that they're using here, name from, might actually be useful. So this is, you know what, let's get name from. I think that might be the thing that converts um, name to frame. That may not be what we need, actually. Look up the frame ID code. Nope, that's probably not what we need. Um, yeah, that unfortunately is not. That's kind of the opposite of what we need. Um, okay. So the question is, we have this NAFE ID, and I guess because it hates us, we have to convert it to a to a uh, actual name before. Oh wow, there's not even a NAFE ID. The word NAFE doesn't even appear in here. Shiny. All right. Let's see. So what we want to say is to name. We're looking for something that'll take us to name. Body ID code to name translation. Body ID code to string translation. Well, these all look really good. Um, look at both of them. Body name ID code definition. I we're gonna look at that. I don't think we're gonna use that one though. Um, frame to name, which we've looked at before. So this is actually the, probably the only one that does what we want. Translate the spice integer code of a body into a common name for that body. And by the way, this is something I don't know if we want to do, we're going to complain about this because uh, there's no reason that uh, the uh, CNM FRM function should not take um, a stringified version of the uh, NAFE ID. And that's just bad design. Okay. 
So da 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 da. We'll cut, cut and paste this, and then we'll actually do something with it. Um, okay. So these are the parameters, and we're going to convert the parameters. Um, convert parameters to strings. So um, I guess moon name and we'll assume it's not going to whatever stir length is we can increase it if we have to planet name stir length and I don't think we need the sun name but let's go ahead and you know if we're going if we're going to do it we might as well do it okay so now let's see if we can find the um, the names of all these things so it's going to be bods now here's the other really ugly thing the first argument has to be a um, has to be an integer it cannot be it cannot be a string so we oh I'm just, this is I'm okay we're going to go ahead and declare them as strings and use the a to i uh, converter which is um, ask you to to uh, integer I hope this doesn't cause me more problems than it solves um, and actually now that I think about it these are going to be the moon ID, sun ID, and planet ID. So we don't need these anymore. We're going to declare them as we use them. Um, sun ID, planet ID. Um, and if I'm really being good about this, I would update the usage to say these all have to be integers. But I don't care. Okay. So now um, this is going to be Moon ID, Sun ID, and we probably will give the names to it. In the na so these, these are all good. These are all planet IDs. Now we need to convert these parameters to strings. And so the spice int code will start with the moon ID. The length will be stir length, because if it's longer than that, we're, do we're doomed. The name will be, I think we decided to name these just um, moon frame, planet frame. Oh, wow. Moon frame, planet frame. Planet name, sun name, where's, oh, moon name, moon name, moon name. So, uh, let's see, this is a uh, array, so I'm pretty sure I can just put it in as, without having to put an ampersand in front of it. So I want it in moon name. Um, and I guess I want to put the result in the variable found. If it's not found, we're kind of screwed. Okay. So... And, and uh, this should actually all occur. Yeah, we should probably furnish the uh, standard TM so we get the maximum possible n number of body names. And the information is, you know, in the files that are loaded by standard TM. So we kind of want that. Okay, and then we can just say um, right here. And then we could say this. And so the second variable here will be moon name. Again, I don't think this is going to work. Uh, and then, oh, let's go crazy here. We'll find the frame for the moon's uh, name. Will this work? Will this compile? Probably not. Um, lots of, oh, this doesn't actually, so there is actually an error in here that it cannot deal with moon undeclared and that is okay because I'd said uh, this is moon ID frame ID for moon and we, we presumably will be um, we presumably will be exiting out even sooner if we couldn't even find the moon uh, because that is that is this code here that we're currently not checking but uh, that we will need to check because then so then we'll add, we'll sort of error out if we can't even find the moon Where's the moon, man? Okay, so that did compile. That is wicked cool. Um, params. That is just awesomely weird. Okay, stand by. Oh yeah, I probably forgot. I probably meant to do it for all three of them, didn't I? <laughs> Otherwise, I'm declaring a string to be an integer, which gives you the pointer, I think. 
but it doesn't matter. It's not what we want. Alrighty. And I'm just going to go hog wild and assume it's going to make. Moon. Okay, cool. So everything worked that time the way it was supposed to. So now, let's go ahead and be... All right, so here we need to basically convert the parameters to strings, complain if not found. So if we can't find the string ID, we have no hope of finding the frame ID, so there's really no point. And we can, I think, use this code from, from here. If not found, moon. Um, oh, this should be like moon name or something not found, because that's what we're trying to get. Um, I think we can actually just say here, yeah, translation for, uh, name for naif ID not found. And the clever thing is we can use that again for the next two of them because, um, because, uh, no, 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 moon ID, because they're all naif IDs. Okay. So we'll just, one, two, three. And let's go do planet ID. Stick it in the planet name. And if it doesn't work, we stop. I don't think we need the frame for the sun. Um, we need the name for the sun because we're not going to get the frame for the sun. But you know what? Let's just be let's just be crazy here. Sun ID, struggling sun name. Yeah, okay. And then let's get let's get slap happy and print out the names of all of these things. So sun ID, sun name, planet ID, planet name, and then oh how brave are we? Uh, actually, we don't even have to um, we can kind of normalize this message too. Let's go ahead and actually let's go ahead and push forward and so if not found uh, we don't even we don't um, we just need to say that frame not found and for this one it's the moon ID and then we do the same thing now finding the sun frame we're gonna go ahead and do it but if it doesn't work we it doesn't matter we don't need the sun's frame to do this because we're not the sun is sort of in its I don't even know if this. I don't know what the sun's frame is. It's not the berry center, but it's it's not interesting. Frame not found, and this time it's the planet ID and the planet name that we're going to complain about. Cause we do know we found the name. Um, otherwise, we would have killed ourselves earlier. Um, and this is going to be sun name. And by the way, if you're wondering why we even bother giving saying sun name instead of, for example, the sun. In theory, you could be looking for an eclipse from a reflected source of light. So you could be looking at an eclipse of Jupiter by Ganymede on Callisto. Uh, we're not going to do that, but you, you, not me, in theory that could happen. So we do allow for that case, that the sun that we're talking about is not the real sun, but just something that gives off reflective light. And in theory, not that we'll ever have, you know, sea spice kernels for... Um, uh, for um, for exoplanets, but we, in theory you could use it for that too. Okay, so let's see if we found the moon. Um, um, oh, you know what? We don't, because we have names, we don't really need to do this. We can just say frames um, percent D percent S percent D per oh, your mama percent S, percent D, percent S, and these are going to be moon ID, moon name, nope, wrong, moon frame ID, moon frame, which is a, 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 a string, and then planet frame ID, planet frame, then sun frame ID, sun frame. So if this compiles and runs, I will be both happy and surprised. And okay, so something went wrong with our uh, make there. 
Um, sun frame ID. Oh, did I get lazy and not declare the ones for the sun? Because we weren't, we don't need them. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's go up here. Um, moon name, planet name. Okay, I didn't actually, did I? Um, let's go ahead and do that. I we probably don't need it, so I, I keep saying we probably don't need it, and we don't. Um, but I keep <laughs> I keep making corrections so that it will work. Um, so let's just go crazy and hope this compiles with errors, but still. Okay. Um, oh yeah, the Earth frame is ITRF 93. I forgot about that. Uh, so we got the moon sign, we got the frames done. Awesome. So what is all this in uh, aid of, as they would say in Britain? Not like all the time, but sometimes. Okay. So all of this was just preliminary work. Now we can use the occulting, the magic, um, the magic occulting function, which is hopefully down here somewhere. We don't need the radiuses for this particular, th do we? Ooh, we might. Um, I think occult, see if it, you give it the frame, the frame has information about the radii. Uh, I don't know, but let's go ahead and look at the function that we really need for all of this. The, the actual meat of the function. And the occultation function. That's an occultation event which we might need. Find occultation. Find occultation type. So we don't really need that. We need find occultation. This is what our goal is here. And let's just copy this signature. And we will then write in what we want. Um... So G F O C L T C, geom ge geometry finder occultation times I think is what that stands for. Um, so the input here I, we're probably going to need to follow the example, and I'm pretty sure the input here is just the word any. Um, for right now. Um, yeah, any. the front body um, the NAFE ID code for the body as a string. Don't you love it? So you can't put an integer in here but you can put um, the stringified version of... oh shit um, is really annoying but they made us change it to integers to get some information now we have to, I think I to a will probably break this but let's go ahead and try it um, I to a of the front body which is in, the, in our case before on the moon we're, the planet is the front body the Sun is the back body um, the front body shape we will model as an ellipsoid not as a point those are I think the only two options Um, or point, that's fine. The f fix of the body frame, okay. So in other words, the frame we just found for the planet, which is planet frame. And I think that is the, the stringified version, so we're okay. Um, and, oh, hang on, let's check. Yeah, then the back body, stand by. Okay, and then the back body is going to be the, the sun. Um, the unfortunate part is you can't model the target body as an ellipsoid. It has to be a point, and that's really ugly. The back shape we're going to model as an ellipsoid also. Uh, the back frame is... I don't think we ever needed the sun frame before, so I'm kind of suspicious now. Uh, let's take a look at how we call GF, okay, any obscuring ellipsoid obscuring frame, the thing that's being obscured. Mm. There's something suspicious about this. Mm. 
because if this is correct, then we are allowed to say the shape of the body that's being obscured. I'm almost sure that's not correct, though. Uh, because if we can, then that's actually fantastic. Then, then we've wasted a hell of a lot of time. Um, uh, let's see, any obscuring? And that's the body. That's definitely the plan is doing the obscuring. The thing that's being obscured, well, let's see if it is the moon. Wow, I'm going to feel pretty stupid. Uh, moon frame. I know you can't give one of them, but the sun is actually just the sun. Uh, back frame. Aberration, and I think we're always going to use CN plus S, which is like the best you can do. Um... B-frame? Okay, hang on. Aha! The target body that is occulted by. So it is the sun that is being occulted, not the, uh, not the moon. So, that's what I thought it was. So it is the sun that we need to, um, cult. And then, at some point we need the target body, but let's, let's not worry about that yet. The shape is going to be an ellipsoid, it's going to have the solar frame. Aberration correction. Um, uh, blah, blah. I think we're just going to say LT. I mean, there's going to be a little bit of an issue here, but Jupiter and its moons are pretty close to each other, so it's not going to be a huge issue. Uh, the name of the body from which the occultation is to be observed, or it's... <laughs> um, Case and leading, okay, and that is unfortunately just going to be a point, and that is going to be the, um, you know, I just realized over here we can just say planet name since we got it anyway, and over here we can just say sun name because we, we got it anyway. And then the um, the resolution, I'm going to put in 3600 for right now, uh, and then I'm going to make a note to say, do I really want that? I don't know if that's small enough. And it, it, it can be, if it's, it, uh, if, you know, if it's, it, the bigger this is, the faster the program will run, but if it's too big, it'll miss some, it'll miss some, uh, it'll miss some occultations. So now, let's go ahead, and since we are, where are we putting the freaking results? Am I missing a parameter still? Yes, I am. Um, I'm missing two of them, actually. Sorry, hang on. Um, let's see. So that's the step size. And so we need the, this is the time frame that we set up earlier and we set this into, um, we do create it, right? Crap. So we get the start year, we get the end year. Do we ever use them to create a time frame? We do not. So let's go ahead and steal the code we do here to create um, so this is, this is how we create the, um, and this, by the way, is the whole point I wrote my own program. We are treating the observer as a point. I don't know why, uh, C-Spice did that. It's kind of stupid. Okay, so we do not need the C-Kernel for this. Um, I'm pretty sure this is wrong. So we're not going to create a window, uh, the window that limits when we're going to be searching, and I'm pretty sure I had to do some funkiness with S here, because it's not going to work like that. There it is. Now here's the temptation. Why not just do this right here? And the answer is mm, getting a little bit ugly, but that's fine. Okay, so this creates the window of limitation, and we do need a, um, uh, good, we do have a result window as well, because that's where we need to put the stuff. So, um, I think this is just going to be ampersand cn fine, ampersand result, which is what we, we often do. Ampersand cn fine, ampersand result. Okay, so this should tell us when the occultations occur, any occultation occurs. Uh, but only at the center of the planet, so it's going to be kind of ugly. So now we need to, we kind of want to go through these times that we've just found, the result as it were. 
And let's see how we do that here. Da -da 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 -da. And so this is code. Let's see, GeoFence. So GeoFence. Okay. So this is not very long code. This basically is just going to say. Um, Uh, do I have variables called? And yeah, I should have spaces here. So beginning and end are just going to be spice doubles that hold um, the beginning and end times. And that looks like it should work unless I don't have beg defined. I do not. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, And this, and this, and the, we do want a, the real beginning and end time uh, because uh, if we ever need to deal with someone who uses this program differently, we, we do want to say that this is a, uh, this is a uh, you know, we don't want Unix times. Okay, so now, if this works, uh, it won't. If this works, I will actually be surprised. Um, Okay, hang on one second here. I'm afraid some spammer is giving me some details. And I am trying to screw him over, but at the moment, he is being a little bit too spammy. He's being a, sk a spammy scammy. Boy, that sounded weird. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm ve it's very unlikely this will actually compile. Uh, the fact that if I get something right the first time... Whoa! It compiles with no errors. I mean, that is... Freaking amazing. Okay. So this says, um, this says the center of the moon is eclipsed by Earth at these times between 2000 and 2001. And let's see what these times are. And let's see if we actually. This is not, okay, I think I've said enough that it's not going to be an accurate, because uh, it's the center of the moon, which is, um, um, and actually I'm bored with this. I want to do 20, I want to do this here and next year. Okay, so we have three lovely presumed occultations occurring. And I'm tempted to round these off to the nearest second, because it's really not pointful to be going into, th we don't have that kind of accuracy to, um, Okay, so we're saying um, January 10th, which just, this is the eclipse that just happened, if you, uh, January 10th, 2020, lo lunar eclipse, not astrology, we just want the, uh, um, all for hard to see penumbral eclipses, which means that there's no place on the moon that experiences a total eclipse, but let's see. Um... So the penumbral shadow means that the you know where por portions of the moon are experiencing a partial eclipse, but nowhere on the moon are is there a total eclipse. So no part of the moon is fully dark. So that is not a great thing. So we don't really care. Uh, the only thing we care about is if we can get some numbers on it. Here we go. Uh, 1910 is when the maximum eclipse occurs, which is consistent with what we have. Um, okay, and I think there was actually a very nice time and date, uh, oh, there was a very nice page that actually showed lots more information, and there it is. And I'm going to go ahead and, and um, bookmark this. This is a specific eclipse, but, you know, it'll give us the others. Um, 7, 10 p.m. Eclipse map and animation. Here we go. The penumbral eclipse began at 1707. So we missed that time because we're looking at the center of the moon. And it ends at 2112. And again, we missed that time because we're looking at the center of the moon, 2024. I do not think there is a name. F well, maybe let's see if there is. Um, s there might be a name for the time, the center of... I don't think there is, though, but let's find out. 28, no. So now, we're going to go a little crazy. Let's see if there's anywhere where uh, 2025, because uh, there's a 40-second thing there, 
is mentioned uh, along with this eclipse. And let's make sure that it has to be in there. Ooh. Okay. Wow. Uh, unfortunately, I think this is a different... Yeah, this is the 2149 eclipse, uh, which is not... It's like 29 years from now. Let's see what this does. Yeah, this is going to go crazier and crazier. And I want January in there, and I want 10 in there, but I don't know if they, they're going to put it in the same order. And then... Lunar Eclipse. Yeah, at this point we are we are clutching at straws. Uh, yeah, because we're not getting the. Oh, hang on. Ooh. Ah, uh, Hawaiian Standard Time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hang on. There's a 2025 in here. This is our last shot. 2025. But again, I think that is 2180. So this is not okay. So this is what we expected. Uh, this is, tells us when the center of the moon is eclipsed, um, which basically is not the same thing as a total eclipse or anything like that. That's okay though, because that's what we expected. Okay, so now what we can do here um, is we can use this to look for uh, Metis eclipses. Metis, of course, being the 16th moon of Jupiter. I didn't know that off the top of my head, so let's make sure we got that okay. Okay. And so we can say, just to get a look at this, we're going to say the um, Metis is eclipsed, gets a solar eclipse as viewed uh, where Jupiter blocks the sun. Interesting. It doesn't look like it's going to get any results here. Oh, sorry. It looks like we're going to get too many results here is what I meant to say. Let's pretend that's true. All right. So now we want to compare these times uh, to, um, you know, what me what we see on Metis, but of course that's only one point on Metis, got to be careful, and what we see from Jupiter. And again, this is not going to be perfect, but Metis is pretty small, we might get pretty close. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put the stream on hold for one second, because I need to, uh, I need to, basically I need to blow my nose. And it's freaking loud, and last time I, I didn't mute correctly, and everyone heard it, and that's still on a recording somewhere. But this time, I'm going to be nice and mute. Alright, I'll be back in about one minute. And I'm back. So now we're all, if I can find the window again, now we're all excited about seeing what, oh, we actually found this for me. This. Okay, so now we get to go to our favorite program, Stellarium, although there are other ways to do this. We could, for example, go to Horizons, and we will at some point, actually, and see, um, um, I don't think you can set up uh, occlusion, uh, occultations from Horizons, but we can see the, the magnitude of Metis as viewed from Jupiter. But right now, it's all fun, all games with Mr. Stellarium again. And let's go ahead and move our um, location. Let's go ahead and start at Jupiter. Jupiter Center. Which is... And let's stop... Let's either zoom out or stop the frickin' clock. Well, actually, yeah, let's go ahead and stop the clock. And we want to go to... We want to hope Stellarium is going to be a little bit less bitchy about that. Oh, here we are. Uh, December 27th at 2136. So that's not too hard. And because we are voyeurs, we will actually watch the eclipse occur. So this is from Jupiter. We are going to find Metis, which, good, there's only one. There's only one Metis, man. Okay. Unfortunately, like we had before, this is not going to show the eclipse, but the magnitude c component is going to go down as we get eclipsed. So let's just see what happens. Um, nice, bright. This is actually, hang on one sec here. No. Yo, mama, stop. In the name of love. If we put this into um, 
equatorial mount's going to look a little bit better because we won't have the rotation of Jupiter to deal with. It's still pretty damn annoying, but okay. I mean, you know, whatever. Minus 0.3. Minus 0.31. 2. Okay. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Okay. That is freaking annoying. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Which will just slow it down and won't actually stop it. Okay. Uh, what did we say? 1221? I, th I think we're on the wrong day. They said 1227, right? Yeah, so let's, let's fix that up a little bit. Okay, you will notice the magnitude is very high, which means Metis is very faint. And when do we predict the um, eclipse? We said 2136.09. So, um, of course, one of the problems here is that Solarium might be using exactly the same method I'm using, in which case um, we're going to get the same results, but only because... Um, okay, interesting. We said the eclipse starts at 2136. What the hell am I doing? I'm lost. Um, all right, December 27th, and we say it starts at 2136, it is 2117, so this, if we uh, speed it up a little tiny bit, maybe more than that, uh, the magnitude still very bright, uh, we're looking for where the magnitude is going to dip um, very greatly, which is not happening so far. And I won't th there should be a medium speed between this speed and the next speed up, which is which is too fast. Okay. Um, now we said twenty one thirty six, so we're still good. So rapidly declining magnitude, but not super rapidly. So we're saying this is in partial eclipse now. Partial eclipse still. And uh, this might actually be nothing but a partial eclipse, so we we have to we have to allow for that possibility. Uh, if it's a full eclipse, this will go the magnitude will go to like 22 or something, the moment the eclipse starts. Uh, it's getting there, but usually it'll just jump to 22, and it didn't. So, okay, cool. See, we just got dimmer. That is nice. Hang on. So we did see that lunar eclipse at the same time we didn't see it. Um, and you know, I am concerned that what we just saw was a solar eclipse of Metis, not a lunar eclipse. Um, because for a lunar eclipse, Metis has to be full. So did we just uh, did we just find something kind of weird here? Um, all right, let's let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and run the program, give it a less, and let's actually find a lunar eclipse of Metis, and uh, or at least when the Metis is full, hope there's a lunar eclipse, and let's see what that what happens. So let's zoom. Metis becoming full. Metis is near full. And let's just stop there. I kind of wish that this would automatically stop the clock. This is not, um, this sort of move it to the regular rate. Okay. Um, see, that looks to me like it's moving even though it's not. Um, this is occurring at uh, 20 oh, 2012. Um, was that really close to the times we already had? No, it's the one before that. So, wow, Metis goes from full moon to new moon, moon in an hour? That can't be right. That cannot be right. That might be right. Um, okay. So now our claim here is that um, Jupiter's shadow, we're on Jupiter, but we're saying Jupiter's shadow is going to hit Metis um, at this time. Stellarium says that. Let's see what we say. 
Um, so let's go find the time and date at this. Um, this, by the way, is not the most efficient way to do things. It might be the least efficient way of doing things. 20, 12, 44 in seconds. So we're looking for like 160909 something. Yeah, it might be good if we... So... And there might be too many of these suckers for us to find this one specific. <laughs> Excuse me. <sighs> to find this one specifically. So this obviously happens a lot. Metis is apparently a very fast rotating moon. Revolving. Okay. Oh, we only said for okay, so this is actually might be the very last one of the year. Or Let's say the fourth last one. Uh, we said 16. Okay. I think it's one of these. So this is uh, December 27th. Uh, so it's not that one. It's a little bit later than that one. Is it this one? Again, this is very inefficient. Never do this. That is the afternoon eclipse. Apparently, the <laughs> media has a lot of full moons. Uh, so we're looking at the one that occurs about 8 p.m. UTC. Uh, so let's go on to this one. So this is the 2136 to 2256 one. And this is a full moon of Metis, which maybe doesn't get eclipsed. Um, I mean, it doesn't have to. So let's look at Metis's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's getting fainter, but it's not getting, like, super faint. Okay, now it's getting super faint. Well, could we had something happen there. <coughs> okay, and Metis disappears there. But here's the problem. I think this is because Metis is new. Uh, not because it is uh, being having a shadow cast on it. Yeah, not because it's having a shadow cast on it by Jupiter. Um, so either I've got my parameters backwards and this tells us when, uh, nah, because it Metis isn't giving us a solar eclipse here. A war, this is just stupid. So that is, this is not a lunar eclipse. This is not the shadow of Jupiter falling onto Metis. Uh, by the way, that looked really cool, like Metis suddenly became full, but that's actually just a star behind it. Okay, well, let's see when the next time uh, Metis becomes full is. Rock and roll! Slightly full. Slightly full, slightly full, more full. Uh, we're not at the end of the year yet. Okay, there. Um, about one in the morning on the 28th. Um, so let's look for that. I'm getting close to crying like a little girl, but not there yet. Interesting. So according to this, there is no lunar eclipse here, which which could be true, but there is one at 4.40, so let's see what happens. And I get the feeling we're going to see a new moon again. I get the feeling I've done something very, very wrong here. Um, all right. Oh, hang on. Mutus. Mutus is becoming full. And we might actually have... That looks like a good full moon there. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at Metis here. This is a, nope, it's a new moon. And one way to tell that it's a new moon is it's gonna be close to the sun. Oh. No, actually this is not a new moon. This is a, this is just weird actually. Unless it's actually trying to show the eclipse um, this is strange. So we said 440. This is 440. Uh, well, it's 438, but let's go back a little bit. Uh, I'm having a little bit of difficulty with this because, um, the new moon should occur when it's very close to the sun, which is 
Oh, there's Ganymede. Which is way the hell over there. And at the full moon, it should be, well, you know, full. Oh, uh, this is strange. Okay. So let's, let's see if there's a, a thing here that tells us what the phase is. Hour, angle, distance, apparent diameter, sidereal period, mean solar day, phase angle. That's what we want. All right, so the phase angle at the new moon will be zero. Let's go ahead and confirm that. Go new. Um, no, that's not right. Well, maybe it'll be 180, or I mean close to 180. I don't think it'll get quite to 180. So this is, Metis is close to the sun, no. Where is the freaking sun? Uh, there's our planet. Um, this is very strange then. So this is, uh, you know, very close to the full moon. And yet, Metis appears to be very close, to have a very crescenty appearance. Uh, and I'm pretty sure this is not the shadow of Jupiter falling on. I think this is just a mistake. Um, so let's see. Let's see if we can... Um, this is also kind of weird that we it changes when you, when you zoom in on it. So um, lots of bad stuff happening here. And by the way, the absolute magnitude... Oh, sorry, the magnitude here is not invisible. All right, let's see what the hell is going on here. So... At this phase, we have 6.46. Now let's see what it is at the full phase. Okay. No, 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 no. So this actually knows it's an, under an eclipse now. Let's get it out of the eclipse. It's going to be a big jump here. There it is. It's going to get super bright here. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is freaking freakity. Elongation. It, it won't get quite up to 180, but it'll get close. Um, so at 907 here, we're saying the elongation is about 180. This is full moon. It does not compute. But at 440, when our prediction was and I'm beginning to become more and more sure that I've got these parameters backwards, but let's find out. And at 0440, at 0440, um, its elongation is very, oh, it's phase, it, we even have the phase, 3% phase. 3.4% um, illuminated, we have all of this information. So this is not the, f the full moon. So let's let's see what happens. Let's see if the illuminated changes when it becomes full and Jupiter eclipses it. Um, illumination increasing, increasing, increasing. Right here. Phase, very close to one. We're waiting for the magnitude to drop drastically. Okay. Magnitude, 22.53. Phase, 0.98. Illuminated, 98%. Not true. It's being eclipsed by Jupiter right now. Um, so why are we not seeing that eclipse? Why are we just like... All right, maybe I do have the parameters backwards. So let's go ahead and do it the other way. If I do, though, that's just suckiness. Um, this is not correct. Yeah, and I s uh, there's, no, there's no time that happens that... Um, Metis is never eclipsing the sun, so not great. Now the problem, I can't really complain about this yet, because the problem is going to be that uh, SPICE and NASA use very different parameters for, um, for determining uh, the position of things. So I am not in a position right now to say this is incorrect. Um, that that story is incorrect. They're just using different parameters, and um, 
There's also a small possibility that they don't know what they're doing when they're computing the full moon. They're not, it's not an obscuration, it's just, um, it's just, well, actually, it should be an obscuration then. Okay. So, pretty, pretty bad here. Um, certainly not the kind of answer you could, well, hang on. There is one way. We can go to Metis and see if we're seeing a, a solar eclipse from Metis for the entire, for like, you know, the entire, the entire moon. Uh, and the moon is small, so if one point is eclipsed, you could kind of guess that all of them are eclipsed. Uh, so let's, let's flip our, let's flip our point of view. Let's go. Everybody, get ready, strap in. We're going to go to Metis faster than the speed of light. Because. And it's in France. Oh! <laughs> what the hell? That was cool. We just transformed to meet us. Um, and we want to find. I think. I think Jupiter is obscuring the sun right now. That's Jupiter. Oh wow. Okay. Okay. So we we kind of have a con. No, we don't actually. That's that's the wrong kind of confirmation. All right, so let's go ahead and do uh, 11.25 on the 1st. Now you might say, um, isn't there a way to uh, program Stellarium to show you... Um, to show you, to just sort of jump to these dates? And there actually there is. Um, okay, so we say here on the 1st, do we say... Oh, 11.25, sorry. So we're saying in six hours, Jupiter's going to obscure the sun. Let's watch. This is a very high, okay. Um, so not looking good so far. Um, and that is the disappearing problem that we need to, I think I've got an example of it though. Okay, so we're still saying the first eclipse of the season will occur, what the hell was that? Do I have satellites turned on? I need to turn them off. Uh, well, apparently it doesn't. What the hell is this? Oh, that's just the selection. Uh, when you select something, it gets uh, red bars in a circle around it. Okay. So let's see when the obscuration begins. Uh, there. 6.33 on the 1st, and it's possible that because of the way I do things, um, it, the first one is being missed. So 11:25. Let's just get to, let's just get over there. The and there is a way to make Stellarium go to all these one at a time, and I am tempted to do that. So 11:24, center of the planet. That is one big horking planet. Um, and I'm zoomed out so far. My my um. Okay, so it does not look like Jupiter is anywhere near eclipsing the sun. Let's speed this up a little bit. Okay. So when does Jupiter eclipse the sun? So the eclipse starts at about 1343-ish, we would say, as viewed from Metis. And uh, complete bullshit. Complete and total bullshit if you accept Stellarium. So the point here is well, the point here is we don't want to, you know, we're not going to accept Stellarium's uh, point of view here. Uh, this actually makes things uh, ugly, which might be why I had the other stuff going on there. Um, yeah, so the problem here is this might be so far off from what uh, Stellarium does. And the, the light travel time is not an issue because we're, we're what, you know, Metis is how far away. It's not very far. Yeah, it's a hundred. It's like a second. It's like a less than a light second. It's half a light second away. Okay, 
So now we have to do the very ugly thing of saying, is this self-consistent? In other words, um, if we assume the positions given by Spice are accurate, would this represent an obscuration? Um, and boy, is that something I don't want to compute. Well, actually, it's not that bad. Um, and if it is, we have a, like a real kind of ugliness between Vsop 87 and um, and C spice and the C spice kernels. Um, but if I want to use this and be confident of it, I am going to have to at least be sure that it is self consistent, even though it's not consistent with Stellarium, which is a wonderful program that's going to go away now. Bye bye. Um, that's consistent with itself. So that may be not that bad. So what we're going to say here is at the, the beginning and the end time. I could have sworn we've done this before. And so I'm going to look to see if I have code that does this. Um, uh, and all we really need to know is the angular difference of the two as viewed from the center of Metis versus their angular radii. Um, uh, which I don't, I mean, that's not necessarily an easy thing to do. Uh, let's see. I do have a function that I wrote in bclib.h, which is not where it should be written. Um, that returns, oh. Uh, so I think the only thing this uh, pose xyz does is it returns position, but it doesn't require you to have a variable for light time, which is not very good. Earth vector, uh, GFQ function inside a function there. Um, these converts equatorial to ecliptic, azimuth to altitude, is decreasing. Umbral data is the one function we thought would be helpful that wasn't perpendicular vector. Whoa. I could have sworn I had this function that returns like 18 bajillion vectors, um, 18 bajillion things. Um, and it returns like the positions, it returns the, the angular changes the positions, it returns the Jacobian. So let me look for the word Jacobian. Oh, here it is, geom info. It does return a double, why? Why, why, why does it return a double? There's no need for that. Wrap around that returns x, y, z, and spherical coordinates, their derivatives, and whether these derivatives are positive or negative. So just a whole bunch of crap, basically. Um, why does it return a spiced? Oh, it returns an array. Hmm. I'm actually returning a freaking yeah. I'm returning a double array. I'm returning an array of doubles, and it's not even documented, which is just awesome. Um. I mean, this will give me everything I want, but it might give me too much. I don't know if I really care for that. Um, and I might just, I don't see a reason not to use the, the sort of, s the spice, the built-in easier reader functions, uh, which are, uh, which are already, you know, I don't, I don't see why I need to, I don't necessarily need a wrapper in this case. Um, so let's go ahead and not do that. All right, so get positions as viewed from Metis, and that is going to be spice, blah, 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 blah. I, I need to figure out what it is. Okay, it's, it's, it's like the spike, the spice easier reader or something. Easy reader, easy position. Um, and we only need the position, so I think we can get away with this one. Um, this is not hard. Um, let's see. This is not difficult. Okay, the target planet here will be, um, there's going to be two targets. One is going to be the sun, the other is going to be the planets. We'll do the planet first. The spice time here is going to be, well, we're in a window between beg and end, so, um, oh, actually, hang on, we need to, we need to get the values first, then we use them. Um, so let's go ahead and get the position to beg for right now. I don't really care. Um, what is ref now? Ref might be the reference frame. Position. 
Uh, I don't actually care what the reference frame is here. I'm going to say J2000 uh, because I just need the difference, but I need the angular difference between the vectors, so I don't care. Um, aberration correction, which I think we're always going to say is CN plus S or something stupid like that. Conversion Newtonian light time. This is trivial. Um, the observer is going to be the moon ID, and the result, we need to declare this, and we need to declare two of these things actually, planet pause, and LT, which we're not going to use, but we need to declare it because we need to, sorry, 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 it needs to be, a, an, okay. Alright, so up here where we're declaring our variables, now I guess I'm going to follow my convention of not declaring variables till we need them, we will declare them here. We could, in theory, redeclare them every time, uh, but let's not go crazy. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Moon ID plant pause. Blah, 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 blah. We want the same thing. And the only, the only sort of, you know, thing that we are kind of worried about is the beg, because that's the beginning. But that's not a huge deal, I don't think. Um, from the moon, we want to put that into sun pause. And I'm going to print these out just for fun. But we all, the only thing we care about is maybe I won't even print these out for fun. Angle, percent F, ta -ta -ta -ta, percent new line, is, um, I need a place to hold it, don't I? Um, no, I don't. It's because it's it returns a spice double. Um, Vec Ang, I think it is, but I think I can grab it from here. Oh, come on. Be nice. VSEP, C. And that does return a double, so I don't have to uh, encapsulate it in anything. VSEP, C, of planet pause, sun pause. Um, and then the rest of it's crap. So this angle should always be, oh yeah, and let's go ahead and be um, obnoxious, 180, come on. Where did I define the word degree? Um, pi times, oh man, I'm being a bitch to myself here. Um, over pi, I can't believe I haven't used pi, in, and no I haven't, pi so that converts uh, 180, um, there are 180 degrees to pi radians. I think I'm doing that in the right direction. Um, yes, I, I'm almost sure I am. This is like multiplying by 57. So this will give us the angle in, uh, in degrees, because I am, because that's the way I like it, baby. All right, so let's go back to uh, BC Get Astro, do a make. I, let's see if it actually, okay, it's complaining about something, let's see if it, let's see if it gives us what we want anyway. The hell? It shouldn't have deleted the old one. Oh, wow. That's really bad, I broke, th I broke the existing one. Implicit direction uh, of space easy p. I must have misspelled it. I must have misspelled it. Um, and I'm almost sure this is because I, all of the damn functions have a C at the end of them. Let's try that again, please. There we go. And boy, I should have been GitHubbing this all the time. I'm going to go to GitHub now that it's actually compiling. But I should have GitHubbed earlier when it compiled. Okay. All nice and get it up. And so now we will, um, okay, now it's kind of getting my nerves. There we go. Dun, 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 dun. Now this seems like a really big angle, but I also know that Jupiter is, is has a huge angular diameter as viewed from uh, Metis, as we just saw, actually. Um, uh, I don't know what the sun's angular the sun's angular diameter from Metis will be similar to the sun's angular diameter as measured from um, as measured from Jupiter, which is fairly small. So the, like ninety nine percent of this is going to be uh, Jupiter's doing. Um, so this is reasonable actually. Um, 
And the other number we could get is the angle at the end, which should also be 34 degrees. It'll, of course, be in the other direction. So, so this is good stuff here. And this is where we can get very, very ugly. What we can do here is we can measure, we can actually take Instellarium, the degree measure between the Sun and Jupiter, as viewed from Metis, at not the center of Metis, but at the surface of Metis, which is a little bit different, and show that it's very different from 34 degrees at, at the times given here, assuming my um, ephemeris time to Unix time conversion is correct. So a whole bunch of conditions applying here uh, that is, um, that is, uh, th that may not be happening. So, so one way to do this, now we gotta be careful because we're working just at the beginning time. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So 11.25 on January, we will go ahead and bring up our friend Stellarium again. And uh, we need to go to Take us to meet us, please. Take us to meet us, that sounds funny. All right, there we are in meet us. Um, stop the frickin' clock. And we said 1, 1, 11, 25, I think. Um, and I kind of wish we had... Um, 11.25, we said the two are about 34 degrees apart. Let's go and find one of them. We'll find Jupiter. It's kind of... Boy, that's one big sucking planet. So that's Jupiter. Our field of view is 80 degrees. We were falling... Okay. Okay. Is the sun so freaking far away that we can't even... F or is the sun being buried? Hang on. Sun. <whistles> so is there like a degree measure? I think there's a plug-in that lets you do it, but in this case, I don't think we need it. Um, our angle is 2 hours 37, 13 degrees. And of Jupiter... Yeah, I, I think we can safely say that's more than... 34 degrees. So we have an issue. Um, unfortunately, the people at Stellarium might say, we don't care that you have an issue because we use VSOP 87. So the correct thing to do here would be to just publish this answer and say, I'm using the real coordinates. Uh, you know, um, Stellarium can go fuck itself. That's not what I'm going to do, though. Um, I am going to see if we can use VSOP 87 coordinates ourselves, I mean we should be able to do that, and get results that mirror Stellarium's. Or I'm going to complain to Stellarium that these numbers are way too far off. Or, I, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. Um, so this is really ugly. I do not like this. And I've been streaming for one and a half hours, and I don't like this. That means I'm going to stop streaming, and hopefully I will be returning at some point. Thank you for watching the stream, uh, and I will see you later.